This is the all new Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 10 and this is a massive release that's bringing some phenomenal new tech to the Linux world. This is going to be the first major Linux distribution that's integrating AI right into the system. RHEL 10 is introducing the much awaited Lightspeed AI and this is really mind blowing. This new version also comes loaded with next gen tech like post quantum cryptography, latest desktop versions, fantastic performance upgrades and RHEL 10 is not just a routine update, it's an evolutionary jump for this big name distro. I've been playing around with RHEL 10 ever since it released and this is set to fundamentally change how you use Linux. This is the future. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's jump right in. Alright, let's start off with the biggest thing that Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 10 is bringing and that is Red Hat's Lightspeed AI integrated right into the CLI here. AI is getting integrated into all the applications and for me initially it was kinda annoying but I have been growing to understand the utility of AI. Let's take a look at what Red Hat has done here. Firstly we need to install the command line assistant package with this command. Once installed you can open a terminal and by typing C or CLA you can just start asking questions. Yeah it's that simple. For example you can just do a C help me figure out why my system is slow to boot. Yeah, you have to type in the message in quotes. You can ask it to install applications, troubleshoot printer issues and even things like working with FFmpeg or even ask it to create shell scripts to automate your work. One really cool way to use this is, this can be used with a pipe. So you can pipe in the output of another command directly into Lightspeed for analysis and for processing. This can be incredibly powerful for quickly running and understanding and even processing the outputs of commands you might not fully understand. One thing is for sure though, Lightspeed is going to significantly lower the barrier to entry for Linux, especially administration. People who are just starting with Linux can have that confidence knowing that an all-powerful, all-knowing assistant is literally just a keystroke away. And Lightspeed is not just a general purpose chatbot, no, absolutely not. Lightspeed is powered by Red Hat's decades of Linux expertise, documentation and knowledge base. And this is just the beginning. Red Hat has pretty big plans for its AI system. It's also already integrated in Red Hat's new feature called Insights where it analyzes selected packages in the image builder and suggests other relevant packages and this really helps in optimizing the image creation process. Lightspeed is also integrated into its OpenShift web console. Red Hat is planning a still deeper integration across its range of products. And I'm really excited for this. It's the inception of AI integration in Linux and it's only going to get better from here on. RHEL 10 has also introduced a significant set of security features and some of the features here are designed to protect your data not just from the threats of today but also the ones from future. Post quantum cryptography is brought in here and this is going to be a crucial proactive measure against harvest now decrypt later attacks that are actually increasing in number. While quantum computers are still in an experimental phase there have been significant advancements and multiple entities like IBM, Google, Microsoft and Amazon have set up clear roadmap for future development. Most of our data is kept secure using encryption algorithms like RSA and quantum computers are going to be a significant threat to maintaining the integrity of these algorithms, although not immediate. But bad actors are already preparing for the emergence of such quantum computing technology. Malicious actors, and these are often sophisticated organizations with tremendous resources, they are currently collecting and stockpiling vast quantities of encrypted data. While this is not useful for them right now, as computers of today cannot break these encryptions, they are waiting for that quantum leap, which is conservatively estimated to come in the next 5-10 to 10 years, and once that day arrives, the attackers will break open these data mines. RHEL 10 is the first enterprise Linux distribution to integrate federal information processing standards compliant post quantum cryptography. Yeah, I know that's a lot of fancy words, but that's what it says in the release notes. So don't hate the player, hate the game. So what this basically says is, instead of using algorithms that make it difficult for classical computers, oh we are already calling our computers classical computers now, nice. In addition to making it difficult to break the algorithms on existing computers, this new algorithm makes it very difficult even for quantum computers to break the encryption. Believe it or not, the dreaded Q day is coming soon and when it comes, there's nothing that can be done. We have to take action now. RHEL 10 is going to give you that option. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. 
With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. RHEL 10 makes a huge shift in its graphical infrastructure by completely transitioning away from X11 to the Wayland Display Server. We are getting the GNOME Desktop Environment version 47 here. We are just one shot of the latest version at the moment, but still this is very good. The last version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, that is 9.6, is still running GNOME 40. But one big change that I want to focus on is RHEL 10 completely removes X11 Display Server here. This move was obviously anticipated since many major distros including Red Hat's upstream distro Fedora has made this move as well. And Red Hat has been a prominent contributor in the development of Wayland Display Server. While X11 itself will not be available here, you can still run your X11 apps using X Wayland. There are some solid benefits of this switch. The first one being enhanced security that's baked right into the Wayland protocol. This aligns nicely with the security push that's happening in RHEL 10. You can also expect improved performance, reduced latency, and overall a smoother experience. Wayland Display Server also brings us advanced features like high dynamic range, better support for high DPI displays, and a lot more. Wayland is the future, and RHEL is integrating it at a very crucial moment where Wayland is very stable and tested. RHEL 10 introduces Image Mode. Now this is a significant shift in how an operating system is built, deployed, and managed. They are using container technologies and basically they are treating an entire operating system itself as a container image. This is a parallel and a modern alternative to traditional package mode installation. RHEL image mode is built using BootC, OS3 and container tools like Podman. This is obviously aimed at server deployment and not necessarily desktop usage. The advantages of using RHEL like this are going to be very strong. Immutability being the biggest one. RHEL becomes virtually unbreakable, and it's also very easy to have consistency across a fleet of systems. As the read-only nature of systems significantly reduces the attack surface, and with this, the security shoots up to the next level. We also get atomic updates and rollbacks. Updates are applied as completely new OS images, and even if an update causes problems, you can just go back to a previous known good image. This new image mode, I think people working with servers are going to absolutely love this because this is specifically designed for edge computing, AI workloads, and I think it's going to be very valuable for RHEL's enterprise user base. Red Hat 10 is a major update in terms of performance, and it's got a whole new engine under the hood. The heart of this release powering the entire thing is Linux kernel version 6.12. This kernel brings improved scheduler and memory management optimizations. We also get expanded hardware support for modern CPUs. RHEL 10 also sets x86-64 version 3 as the baseline microarchitecture and this enables AVX2, FMA and BMI2 instruction sets. This is going to give you measurable gains in various workloads. Multipath PCI support, local I.O. for NFS are brought in with this kernel and this significantly boosts I.O. throughput and reduces latency on storage heavy servers. NFS local I.O. has been shown benchmarked showing extreme performance gains in high IOPS scenarios, lowering CPU overhead on network controllers. We also get Performance Copilot version 6.3 here. Performance Copilot is a very powerful framework for in-depth system performance monitoring and analysis. This is the next level of the system monitor that we get on most Linux distros. This lets you go really in-depth into various subsystems like the kernel itself or the apps themselves or even containers if you are running them. The 6.3 version that we get here specifically improves upon its integration with libvirt and this is going to let you monitor and analyze VMs running on RHEL 10 more thoroughly now. Red Hat 10 also refreshes core system components, glibc 2.39, systemd 256, c toolchains and python 3.12 for improved efficiency. This version is specifically tuned to reduce latencies, boost throughput, and streamline resource usage on modern hardware. Red Hat Enterprise Linux has always been a workhorse, so they have paid attention in that area and they have made it very well suited for compute intensive tasks. Red Hat Enterprise Linux has always maintained its reputation for providing superior stability and a boosted performance. It's this sweet balance that it's known for and this version is going to continue in the same path. Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 10 released in May of 2025. 
until May 2030, that's for the next 5 years, it's going to receive comprehensive updates including security fixes, bug fixes and feature enhancements. We'll also get hardware enablement updates for any new hardware released in this period and also new software functionality. These will be brought to us through regular minor releases approximately every 6 months. After these initial 5 years, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10 will go into maintenance support phase where from 2030 to 2035, it's going to receive critical and important security updates. They will not focus on enabling new hardware or adding new features to existing software, but high priority bug fixes will be pushed to users. This is the main life cycle of RHEL 10 or pretty much every Red Hat major version. And after that, Red Hat offers some kind of extended life support plans, but this is the main thing you should keep in mind. A new major version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux drops every 3 years, so there's that as well. Systems on RHEL 9.6 can be upgraded to RHEL 10 in place using the Leap utility. Since there are some major changes here like x86-64 v2 architecture not supported anymore, just be mindful of the update process. RHEL 10 isn't just another update, it's a huge milestone. Although mainly in the enterprise side, Red Hat Linux is still one of the biggest names in the world of Linux and they are reshaping what we expect from an enterprise OS. They are integrating AI at a very deep level and this is what I'm really excited for. Right now, I'm having a very complicated relationship with AI but I definitely want to have Linux distros that are capable of harnessing AI and letting people use its phenomenal power. Security is another area where RHEL 10 really impressed me. RHEL has always been top grade in this matter but this version takes it to the next level. Major points. Well, there you have it guys. That's Red Hat and Pris Linux 10 for you. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found this video useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also give me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 15 hottest hacks that will supercharge your Linux desktop's performance to the next level and truly unlock your Linux. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Tech signing out.